Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. My name's Andy. This is video 52. This is the last Rust 101 video. We're working through the last exercise in the set of exercises. Uh, we're working, we're talking about foreign function interfaces and how to get Rust code to talk to other languages, programming languages. And in this case, we're talking about how to write a custom Python extension. So write some really fast Rust code that you can run from within your Python code. Uh, which is really easy and straightforward to run from Python, um, but super fast and safe because you've written Rust code. Uh, this is a tricky exercise. I've kind of had a look ahead um, and seen some of it, but we'll get through it. We'll be all right. Okay, so here's the readme for it. We're talking about a crate called Py03, uh, and we're going to write some clever code called SIMD code uh, in, in Rust and then be able to call it from Python without having to worry about how clever it is. So, um, py03 is a thing that um, helps us write Python extensions. And um, we have some skeleton code already given to us, which we can run like this. We'll just cargo build. And uh, believe me, that built as a shared object file. I've like, um, I built it before. That's why it didn't take very long. And now we copy that object file, which, which got, so for some reason got stored in this directory, but it's this .so file. If we copy it into the local directory, like so, now it's here. Now if we start Python from in this directory, it can just directly use that, like this. We just say import pointwise simd, and we've got pointwise simd. And pointwise simd at the moment um, has just a dumb function called summer string, which we saw in one of the previous exercises. So if we add together three and seven, um, then it gives us the answer, but it gives us the answer as a string, which is weird, but it's just like, you know, just a, an example thing. So let's look at the code that caused that, caused that to happen. It's in here. Uh, there is, and we saw this in a, in, in the slide. No, yeah, we saw this in the slides, didn't we? In, um, video about 49. So basically to make a Python module, we need, I guess we need some stuff in cargo.toml. Yeah. So we need some PyO3 stuff in here. Um, this needs to be a C dilib and it has a name and it needs to have this lib section generally. Once we've got all of that, um, we can write things like py function in here. Um, and they say this function is a Python function, which has a py result. Um, and then we add this function to our Python module. So this is a Python module, pointwise simd. Uh, we call this wrap pi function thing, tell it to wrap this thing. And you can see that what this does is adds the two numbers up, turns it to a string, which is exactly what our Python thing did. All right. So that is the, um, like simple function. So like, if you want, that's the end of this video, right? Like, um, you can write your Rust function, um, in, uh, you can write your function in Rust and then you can import it into Python just using that much code, right? You, Import this PyO3 prelude to get things like Py function and Py module, I guess. Uh, write your Rust code. This is your Rust code. Return a Py result. Uh, make sure you do this stuff to actually add your function to the module, and you're done. But um, this is like the, this exercise for some reason is a lot more ambitious than that. It wants to use some cool stuff you can't do in Python, which is these SIMD instructions. Um, so what it's telling us to do is um, hook up a pointwise sum function, which should call point, pointwise sum SIMD. And it says it's easiest to use VEC F64 in the interface. So let's have a look at that. We have this point by some SIMD function. Marked as unsafe. Um, no comments to explain why it's unsafe, but uh, I guess we'll live with it. And what this function does is it adds up uh, A and B together. So A and B are lists of numbers, and it adds all those pairs of numbers that's why it's called pointwise. Adds those pairs of numbers together, puts the answer in A. And actually, to help us out here, um, they've written a function which does it the dumb way. So let's comment out the, the clever way for now and make it do it the dumb way. We'll get this working, and then we'll think about how to do it the clever way. So what it says is add a pointwise sum pi function. So it's going to look very much like this. like this except it's not instead of taking in numbers and returning a string it's going to return now i had a bit of a think about this and i was wondering whether you could do something clever but for now let's do something really simple 
which is that it, it takes in two vectors of f f64 and it returns a vector of f64 and it does a pointwise sum on them and the return value is whatever got put into a um because <clears throat> it kind of consumes a so basically yeah the the the, the underlying pointwise some SIMD thing does this thing where it, it writes the answer from B into A. But just to make a nice Python interface, you want to just take in two lists and return a list, right? So we're going to do it like this. So we can just call. Well, we're going to we're going to return A basically after we have pointwise summed it with B, like so. Uh, this should be pointwise sum SIMD. Now that's unsafe because the function is unsafe. So let's wrap it in an unsafe block. Like so. Oops, too many semicolons. And we're passing in vector, but we shouldn't. We should be passing in a mutable reference to A and a reference to B, right? Because A, a is going to get modified by this operation. And in order for that to work, may needs to be mutable. So now we're calling, we've, we're done with this chunk. We've defined a function which is like suitable for use in Python. And we've called through to our real function. And now we're just going to add it in to our module. Um, so now it should be available in our module. So let's test it out by building, copying in the shared object file. If we forget that, it's going to really annoy us. So let's try not to forget that. And then importing it, and then we're going to call um, pointwise sum on two lists of numbers. So let's go for one, two, three, and um, 20, 40, 60. And the answer we get back should be exactly that 21, 42, 63. So again, if you want to stop the video at this point, we're done. We've made our pointwise simd function, added it to our Python module. Yes, here it is, pointwise sum function, added it to our module pointwise simd, and it all works. So what's left of this exercise is to implement it in a fast way that you couldn't do in Python, which is kind of exciting, right? So just checking that. Yeah, so there's nothing else to read and read, mate. All it is is the to-dos in here to do this the cool way. So this pointwise sum, it doesn't actually do anything clever, right? It just adds up uh, all the numbers using this very dumb way of saying the eighth one gets added, the beth one, onto it. So we can do better than that by uncommenting this, getting rid of this, and trying to read what this code does. So this takes in... Uh, a mutable slice of f64s and a slice of f64s and it defines this thing called a width which is basically how many numbers you can add up simultaneously if i understand this right i've i've i didn't get all of this and i've just gone had a quick look at it looked up some of these functions that we've got and that's my understanding the width is like oh we can do this super fast by um or twice as fast i guess maybe by treating these F64s as if they were 128-bit numbers, adding them up using like a single CPU instruction or whatever, and then breaking them out again. And that's what we're doing here. So we've got to, they've got to be the same length as each other. And then we loop through, and we loop through every other um, index into these slices. And then we're going to use SIMD instructions to add two things simultaneously and then we add, add two to the width. So that's the plan. And we have these functions like mm load pd, which loads a pointer into a value. So it takes in, um, oh no, that's, that's the wrong one. Sorry, sorry. So we should, we should be doing load pd. Yeah. So what that says is take in, um, a pointer to a const f64. So take in a pointer to an f64, which actually needs to point at two f64s next to each other, and then treat it as something, some 128-bit thing that we can use. I don't, as I say, don't fully understand it, but it's going to be something like let uh, 
a val equal right something some part part of a so it's going to be a dot as putter plus index something like that oh, that doesn't actually work um oh, so, so let's just back off a little bit and find find out what pointer we want first so let's say the location in a that we want is the beginning of a that's what a dot as putter says um, plus index, but you can't do plus. I tried this earlier. You have to do add index. Like so. Um, so now we can look that up, I think. At, at, look up the thing at, at a location and treat it as a 128-bit thing. So this thing here, this M128, as I understand it, is like... Um, I'm treating these two F64s as a 128-bit um, number. Now I'm going to add them. Well, not even as a 128-bit number, right? But as this kind of pair of F64s that can be handled together. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look up in B. Um, the, the equivalent thing at the same index in B. And then I'm going to get hold of these two F64s packed together in that location. And then I'm going to... Now, by the way, if anyone has, is watching this and they know better than me about what on earth is going on here, I'm basically making this stuff up. Um, so this should be... Um, oh, we haven't actually added them yet. So I guess, yeah, so we've, we've loaded these two into things. Then we're going to add them. So mm -M add pd. We're going to add the two values together, a val and b val. Uh, if I could type a v. And we're going to put that into something called, let's just call it sum. And it's, it's a point-wise sum, right? So it's added the two F64s independently from each other, I assume. I assume that's what this add does. Yep, it adds packed double precision 64-bit floating points in A and B. So both A and B are like pointers to these like two numbers at the same time. And it returns another two numbers at the same time. Did I say pointers? A and B are both like two numbers at the same time. Um, and then we add them up. We've got this new thing, which is also two numbers at the same time. And now we're going to store this thing into A, um, like so. And A lock needs to be a mutable pointer for this to work. So we need to say as mute putter, like so. Now we can get rid of this stuff. So by the way, I had no idea how to do any of this before I started this. And I, I, I tried it out once already, which is why I've got a clue. But let's see whether it works. Okay, so it built okay. Now there is a deliberate bug in this code. Um, and if we run cargo test, we'll find it. So uh, we could also just um, run the Python and we'd find it as well. So the problem here is uh, you can see this is the expected output in the test and this is the actual output and the last number is wrong. So let's have a look at our test. So what our test says is make a vector of the numbers 1 to 9 and make another vector of the numbers 11 to 19. Make them be F64s and collect them into a vector. Now do the, the adding up. And then the expectation is that the answer should be like X plus Y for each of those values. So the last number should be like a 9 plus a 19, which makes 28, which is what it's expecting. But actually the last number we got was 9. And the reason is we didn't cover a particular case, which is... What if you're in the last number in this list and it's not an even number of things in the list? Well, in that case, this isn't valid, this stuff we're doing here. Um, we're saying the, yeah, this stuff here. We're saying, oh, this, this is two F64s next to each other. So, uh, load, load that into this packed thing. But the fact is there's only one F64 there and then it could be anything after that. So we actually need to do something different, which is if, index plus width is less than length then we do all this stuff 
Otherwise, we're going to do the dumb stuff we used to do, which is A brackets index plus equals B brackets index. Just that, I think. Um, and basically, this is the special case. End of the array. Uh, only one F64 is there. And here it is, like two F64s, two F64s, at least two F64s remain so we can use, um, I guess let's just call it SIMD, that's what the docs call it. So I think that will fix our bug. Let's try it out. It did not fix our bug. Um, I wonder why. Maybe the, my arithmetic is wrong here. So if the index is, the yeah, index starts off at zero. Let's try printing some stuff out and see whether we get anywhere. So let's print out, let's, let's debug print index. It should print out once to say index um, got to, all right, so it doesn't. So maybe, let's just for experiment. We're gonna think this through in a second, but let's just experiment and see whether that happens. Um, oh, what? No. It should be if index is less than length. Oh no, hold on. I see what's happening. I see what's happening. I was completely wrong. The, this while actually already covers this case, right? Um, so this stuff is all fine. The problem is we might have one left at the end. So we need to say, Oh, and that's why that other loop was, oh my goodness. The other loop wasn't just a dumb implementation. The other loop was supposed to be here. It's basically saying, well, index is less than length. I'm not sure about this less than or equal now. Oh no, yeah, no, that's right. Um, yeah, all right. So I was, I was seeing that as just a, a, the dumb version of our code, but actually it's a necessary part of our code which is we have to clear up everything that's left after um, thing. And like like the, this stuff here, like I guess we should say something about this. Caution assumes width equals two, right? Because this load PD thing is specific to when you've got two F64s next to each other. So having this width variable is a little odd here. All right, have I fixed the bug? No, because it got to increase index. Like so. How about that? Okay, so now our tests pass. Let's build it. Copy it in, otherwise that's going to be annoying. Um, and then bring it in and add them up. And look, it works even though we're using um, the clever SIMD instructions to do it. Just to double check that. Let us not do this. I build it all and just make sure that the Python really is using our new version. So build it, copy it in, run Python, import it, run the code. And you can see, look, the last one in the list didn't get done. It just came out as a three. So it really is using our new code, which is cool. Now, the other thing I thought about this was this seems slightly inefficient for me. So we're tracking an index, but we're also creating pointers by doing a lot of adding every time. And that, and this plus here just seems, this plus here, this plus equals here. It seems like we're just adding a lot of things up. So I feel like we can, if we're going for inf efficiency, let's try and make this really efficient. So let's loop through. Um, we can get rid of length. And instead, we'll get a pointer to, um, let's call it a lock. Let's do the same thing here. So it's gonna be a mutable pointer. 
which is the location of A. And let's do let A end be A lock dot add A dot len. Which I think works because, yeah, it's a pointer of type F64. So len is the number of F64s in A. So when we add that on, we should end up with the end of A. And I guess we're going to also need um, a B lock. So this is going to be mutable. As well as being a mutable pointer, it's going to be mutable because it's going to change. Um, as well as the thing it points at changing, which is what the mutable pointer thinks about. So now let's get hold of B. And this is going to be a mutable pointer to a non-mutable pointer into B, because we don't actually change the stuff B is pointing at, but we are going to change this thing. Um, now we're going to do a while loop, uh, which is while A lock is less than, I guess it will be A lock plus width, is less than or equal to A end, We'll keep the same logic for now, at least. We'll think about that width thing in a minute. Uh, and this needs to be um, there. Oh, that should be a end. So yeah, loop through. Uh, and now we've got a lock and b lock already, so we don't need them. So then we do all the clever stuff. And that's still going to be the same. A lock and B lock are still going to be the same. And at the end, we're going to say A lock. Now, is there a plus equals here? Or do we need to, like, say blah equals blah plus blah? Probably need to do that. So we can say A lock equals, maybe there's a better way of doing this. A lock equals A lock add width. And same for B. So now we're not doing all that extra plusing and stuff. And we've still got to handle the, the very final case, which is if we haven't quite got to the end yet, then the thing at location A so star a lock, I guess, plus equals star b lock. Now there's going to be some unsafe in here. And then it's going to be, we're going to need to move them on again. And this time we add one. And actually, technically we don't need to add to b lock because we're only ever going to do this once. So we'll immediately get out. So this all just could be an if or something. Um, but that again would assume that width is one, whereas uh, it is two, and maybe it's not. Now, why is this not complaining? Oh, it's not complaining because this whole function is unsafe. Again, I'm 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 uncomfortable with that because I want to know which bits I'm doing are unsafe. But yeah, we're basically saying um, increase the thing at location A by looking up the thing at location B. So with any luck, this will still work. It does. And it looks to me more efficient. Now, who knows whether it really is, but we're doing pointer arithmetic here. We're basically saying, give me the location of the first thing in A, um, and then keep going until we haven't gone past the end, do our stuff with our uh, SIMD stuff, and then move the pointer on by two each time and move on. So we've got these two pointers to the place in A and the place in B that we're uh, currently looking and then when we come off the end, there's still a bit more to do. Um, yeah, and like I said, update the thing at location A by looking up the thing at location B, and then add one to the pointers, the point at the places in A and B. So I think we've milked all we can from the very last episode, uh, very last um, video in this series, um, where we implemented a Python module used stuff that you can't do in Python to do with SIMD and whatever, and unsafe stuff, all kinds of clever point of arithmetic. Maybe it's correct, maybe it's not. Uh, and then we were able to use it in Python 
Uh, let's check we built it. Copy it in, and then we use it in Python. And it's very straightforward to use. You just give it two lists, and it adds up those lists. But did you see how fast that was? Real fast, real fast. All right, I hope you've enjoyed Rust 101. Um, I hope you uh, have some ideas for things you'd like me to look at. In future, I definitely think I want to talk about async because I have some clue about async, having done it a bit. Uh, and I know it's really difficult to get your head around. I'm also thinking about writing a little programming language that's um, basically like an easy version of Rust uh, that kind of works like Python, but the syntax is like Rust, something like that. So um, I might do some videos just taking you through like the bits of me writing that language. Um, but yeah, um, interested in your ideas. Hope you enjoyed this. If My goodness, if you got to 52 videos and you didn't enjoy it, you need to think about your choices. Um, so yeah, I hope it was useful. Um, watch it all again. Um, and let me know what you'd like me to do next. And have a fantastic day, month, week, year. See you soon.